The Nistler College of Business and Public Administration is the largest school of business in North Dakota. The college has long recognized many of the core values that surface through the UND strategic planning process. Here to discuss a new era for the college is Dean Amy Henley. Amy Henley. <laughs> Dean Henley, thank you for joining us this morning and welcome. Thank you for having me. One of the themes that emerged throughout the strategic planning process was student success and emphasized success both inside and outside of the classroom. One of the ways that the college does this is through the Middleton Business Competition. Can you tell us a little bit about the program? Absolutely, thank you, Faith. The Middleton Business Plan Competition is an example of the many experiential learning opportunities that we have in the Nistler College. It's one of the key strategic priorities, as you mentioned earlier, what our values and our initiatives are. We want students to experience interactions before they have out in the real world and they join their careers. So Tom and Connie Middleton were generous enough to provide us a $5 million gift about a year and a half ago and that has supported many endeavors but particularly the Middleton business plan competition where there's a competition across campus, engineering students, aeronautics students, business students of course, arts and sciences, etc. And we compete uh, over a three-day weekend and the winner actually gets a great deal of prizes in terms of funds and business support, but they also get to ring the closing, del, closing bell at NASDAQ. So that's one we're proud of. Awesome. So I know that this year the college was re-accredited and this places your college in the top 5% of business schools, not just nationwide, but globally. Can you talk a little bit about what this means for the college and its students? Absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that because our accreditation is something we're particularly proud of. We have accreditation through NASPA for our Masters of Public Administration program and for America SBDC for our SBDC programs. Our most recent accreditation with AACSB does focus on our business programs and business degrees. And one thing that I'm particularly proud of with that accreditation is AACSB really wants to see the impact that students and colleges of business and public administration are making. So we were particularly proud to be able to show the impact in the community, the impact that our students are doing with internships and with community engagement. And AACSB, the team that came in, was particularly proud of that and pointed that out as something that we should, we should herald ourselves for. Yeah, that's fantastic. So I know we've talked about the UND strategic plan and you've talked a little bit about experiential learning and going beyond the classroom. Talk a little bit about how the Nistler connects with the community of Grand Forks. Absolutely, it is so special to have such a strong relationship. Uh, Mayor Bochensky is one of our econ grads that we're proud of, but we also have so many partners in in local organizations, also with the chamber, and the most demonstrative example, I think, is where the city invested $1.3 million into our new Nistler Hall. And so we are so proud to have a City of Grand Forks Workforce Development Center in that student-facing area right on the first floor of Nistler Hall where students all across campus can come by and see what the opportunities are in the City of Grand Forks and with different organizations within the city. That's awesome. So this fall represents a milestone for the college. The Nistler is open and students are now learning in a new building. Talk a little bit about this project and how it was funded. Happy to. It, it was really exciting to see, you mentioned students learning in the space. When that AACSB team was here back in April and the building was about 90% done, one thing they mentioned was that this building screams how much you care about your students. As a university, you can tell that this building was built for students. So it was interesting to see the day before classes started and it was completely empty and then you come in the next morning and every little space where we had different touchdown spaces where they can work with groups or work on their own, every seat was filled, every conference room was being utilized, so that was great to see. And it's a reflection of the funding project that we partnered with the city, as I mentioned before, with the state, with our lead donors, Werner and Colleen Nistler, and over 250 additional donors who made gifts up to $30 million in total to provide the $70 million funding for the project. So I think it's a great example of that public-private partnership. 
Wow, what a great partnership there. And so with all the other events we have going on this week, I know on Friday we have a ribbon cutting ceremony for the building. Talk about this event and when it'll take place. Well, everyone is invited, everyone in town, everyone on campus, because we are very proud. This project is over a decade in the making and we want everyone to turn out for our grand opening. It is Friday morning, as you mentioned, at 11 a.m. in Nestler Hall and all are welcome. It'll be a great celebration of a very special time. Sounds like a great event. Now we're gonna give you a sneak peek of the new building. The final beam was put in place last spring and since that time, workers have completed the 123,000 square foot building just in time for fall semester. So Dean Henley, now that the building has been open, talk a little bit about what it's been like working in there and being in the new building. It's been so exciting. Gamble Hall had served us very well since 1968, so over 50 years. Uh, but we had one long tenured faculty member who mentioned a few weeks ago, it was like he had a brand new job, that he was so excited to come, in, to, come to work. Not that he wasn't before, but even more <laughs> excited to come to work in this new space. Felt like he had a new energy to his career and to his job. So it is so refreshing and humbling to see how many people truly enjoy being in the space and are, are learning in the space. Yeah, very lucky to have such great faculty here. And now as we start a new beginning, we will start to move into the future. So how will the building support some of your long-term goals as we move forward? Because Gamble Hall had served us so well for over 50 years, it was critical to us that we construct a building and JLG Architects, I know who is here, and PCL and community contractors did a great job of suggesting things that would allow the building to be timeless in nature. For example, in classrooms where you have tiered seating, normally that tiered is accomplished through construction. And JLG recommended that instead we tier that seating through furniture. And so in five, 10, 20 years, if we need greater flexibility in the space, then we have that available by the completely flat floor. So we made a lot of intentional efforts for the space to last as long as possible and to be timeless as Gamble Hall was. Fantastic. Well, Dean Henley, thank you for joining us today and congratulations on all your hard work and where we are now. Thank you.